Good evening, everybody. Brian Newbert here from uh, goldenblack.com, live at home uh, with some time to kill, uh, some oc occupational therapy to do, uh, a little less brain, and a basketball game here to talk about with a quick little rap video uh, following Purdue's 79-74 to uh, loss at Indiana. Obviously, Mike Carmen uh, traveled to Bloomington uh, and climbed Mount Sinai to get to his media seat uh, to watch this, uh, you know, Purdue's second loss of the season, but I'm here, I watch the game on TV, I can speak, I can't type quite yet, thus this. Um, so I figured I would just cut a quick little video here. Um, so Purdue obviously, you know, uh, all season long, I kind of thought had been due for sort of one of those buzzsaw boat race no-show games that are always part of the typical college basketball season, especially for teams as young and as new as Purdue is. And, you know, for about 20 minutes, you know, Purdue was that team. You know, they were the team that that had to uh, had to miss a free throw before they could make a free throw, that turned the ball over way too much, that just played right into the right into the assembly hall trap. Um, and that's what this game came down to. Uh, obviously it came right down to the final minutes, Purdue being within one there. Uh, toward the very end, but um, it was all about the first half. Being down 16 was too deep a hole to get out of. Uh, I think Purdue's poise for the first time, you know, really kind of was compromised uh, by the by the Assembly Hall crowd. I think that uh, they were loose with the basketball. They were uncertain with the basketball. They were uh, kind of shaky in their assignments. They were just kind of shook. I, I mean, it isn't the first time all year long Purdue's been shook in, in, in a – in a uh, uh, stretch of of game, I think it was the first time Purdue was shook, and it cost them a game. I think you know the, the first half kind of decided this, um, and then the second half was only decided by a couple of moments. But I think that uh, you know this was kind of typical modern. This was kind of typical modern Purdue Indiana, um, where when the game's a party, uh, Indiana's pretty good, and when the game's a uh, a Big Ten basketball game where one team has to be smarter and one team has to be tougher, one team has to play to its strengths, you know, Purdue's pretty good. And that's that was the delineation between the two halves, but it just so happened the party was a little bit more impactful um, than the latter portion of it. Uh, I think that the second half just came down to a couple of moments, one of which was there was a swing where Ethan Morton shoots a three, it goes in and out, and pops out, and then Jalen Hood Shafino comes down and uh, shoots a jumper that goes that goes out and in the exact exact opposite of what Ethan Morton's did. I can't remember what the score was at that time. I can't remember much of anything right now. Um, but it was a really big moment in the game, and it would have been a really big swing had that had that three gone down, and then maybe Purdue had got a stop at the other end or something like that. But that was kind of that's kind of where the ball bounces sometimes. Um, and then the other one was simply in, in the final minute, the the uh, the game coming down to the two freshman point guards. You know, Purdue has a great young point guard who's going to be an unbelievable player uh, during his career for Purdue, has already been an unbelievable point guard for them this season. Braden Smith has made this season possible uh, for them. I, I've, I've said before, and I'll say it over and over and over again, that Braden Smith might go down as Purdue's Cassius Winston. But Braden Smith, the play Braden Smith made on the turnover in the final minute was precisely the play why I was among the many people who were wrong in kind of questioning his 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 ability to make his game translate because it, 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 it's that pension he's always had to drive into traffic, leave his feet, and play maybe a little bit out of control that he could do in high school. But that's the stuff that you – that really doesn't fly in the Big Ten. That was a freshman moment during a season in which he's very rarely looked like a freshman. Um, and then Jalen hood Shafino, um, who's a freshman to name only, and in, in reality he's a an, an, an NIL mercenary one and done who will uh, be out of here um, in a couple of months, makes just a pro-level play to at, at the end of the shot clock to score and really put the game away. Um I thought at the time, but um, give a lot of credit to Zach Eady, give a lot of credit to Purdue for fighting back from 16 down at the half. Uh, that game looked over. That game looked like 
the typical buzzsaw, the typical, you know, um, you just go to somebody else's place and they're just better than you all game long. They make threes, they get to the line, they get the calls, all of that stuff. It looked like that. And Purdue made it something other than that in the, at the start of the second half. And the reality is here, too, is this is the point in the Big Ten season now uh, at, the, at the turn where teams really start to define themselves. They, we start to figure out who's really good, who's built to last, and who actually has been doing it with smoke and mirrors, and I, <laughs> Northwestern. Um, I think Purdue's absolutely, absolutely built, to la- built to last. The honest reality of this game was that Purdue had very little to lose. Indiana had everything to gain. And that sort of environment is always is, is, is always a hornet's nest. Purdue is still in absolute absolute command of the Big Ten race. I, I there might very well stay number one in the country, given how everything else played out um, around the country. They're still gonna be a number one there's they'll still be a number one seed as of tomorrow. It kind of is what it is. And you know what? To be brutally honest with you, Purdue can use this because, you know, obviously Purdue lost once before this season, but having another opportunity here to come back from a pretty pretty emotional loss that will kind of stick in their craw for a couple of days, theoretically, is a good chance for them to improve, a, a good chance for them kind of, to kind of recalibrate themselves and and kind of stuff like that, and to kind of keep them on edge. And that's, you know, that that's me parroting Matt Painter um, to a certain extent. But you always want to stay on top of the things that can get you beat. And this was a healthy reminder that, you know, Purdue's not going to win if they're turning the basketball over. Purdue's not going to win if they're detail-oriented. Uh, if they're not detail-oriented on defense, Purdue's got to make its free throws. Not that anyone's trying to miss free throws. But... Um, so Purdue can, you know, potentially parlay this in the in, into a surge to end the season strong. They're still in in the pole position in the Big Ten race. I think that's the thing that matters most right now, um, because it, it it's the first thing up, and you're in such a good position now. Letting that slip away would be really a would be really unfortunate and kind of a kind of a repeat of last season. And one of the themes of the rest of this season for Purdue can be about kind of exercising the demons of last season. Um, because, because that team left so much on the table that this team can now, can now make amends for. But I thought this was really one of the first times Purdue looked young. Uh, you know, Braden Smith was up and down, as I mentioned before. I think, you know, Fletcher Lawyer should prepare for more games like this because he was obviously a marked man. And, uh, they were very physical with him. One of the runouts in the first half, uh, that Indiana got that really changed this game. That was a... That's what this was all about. It's about produced turnovers in the offense that Indiana got off those turnovers, which just clearly a foul against Fletcher Lawyer. And he's just going to get bullied. I mean, that's just kind of the nature of Big Ten basketball. That it hasn't happened yet, that it hasn't shown up yet, um, is just a testament to just how much this team has persevered and and how good they've been and how how advanced they've been and and things like that. But you cannot let you you can't let Trace Jackson Davis just run up and down the floor in the open floor off turnovers. Um, and give him a lot of credit, though, for that first half. You know, it took two and a half years and, and and half a million dollars of NIL money to keep him there, but they finally got a winning Big Ten player out of him, and they're winning because of him. And he he's got he doesn't have a whole lot of help. I don't know if anybody's noticed that, um, other, other than Hood Shafino, who's going to be a really good pro, I think. Um, but he's um, he really drove them in the first half, and uh, you have to give him some credit for becoming a winning player. Uh, you know, kind of really for the first time in his career, more than just kind of a, kind of kind of an an Instagram sort of guy. You know, uh, he's become a a winning Big Ten player, and and good for him. But so is Zach Eady, and you know, Zach Eady gave Purdue a chance in this game. Um, he proved himself again today. I think to be the best player in the country, uh, not just with the numbers, but with the circumstantial play in terms of of his ability to carry his team out of a really dire situation. Um, and if those two sequences I mentioned before just go different or one of the two go different, you know, I, 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 th- I think this game might've turned out differently and, you know, Purdue might be talking about this as one of the most memorable wins in the history of this rivalry, but Purdue gets him again, you know, uh, 
in Mackey Arena later in the season. I, I would anticipate that one going Purdue's way. Um, but we'll see. You know, obviously Purdue's still not in a position where they can take anything for granted. Um, but um, Purdue really, you know, uh, walked into the, the proverbial buzzsaw today, and then everything after that, I thought they really acquitted themselves well um, from, from a competitive standpoint anyway um not just kind of not just kind of allowing it to happen like they did at Michigan last year you know kind of stuff like that I I, th- I think this team has a lot of personal pride and I think that's I think that really showed up today and um I think uh that's a big reason Indiana had to sweat this one to the very end so um so that's what I got from uh Purdue's 79 to 74 uh, loss at Indiana. As you guys know, um, it's been an eventful week for me. Um, I had brain surgery on Tuesday. Um, so I'm rounding back into form here. Uh, I still have to keep working on this. Um, but cognitively, I'm fine. Uh, as you can see from the last 11 minutes and 12 seconds, I, I, I can speak fairly well. Um, I can, uh, I'm a long way away from driving. I don't think you're going to see me in another basketball game this year. Thank you so much to Mike Carmen for um, for taking this over. This has made this so much easier. Uh, this has been he he has he has done me the greatest one of the greatest favors of my life in in doing this. And um, I ask all of you to profoundly appreciate that insofar as I can because that that's a really weird request to make. Um, but that's what I got. Uh, I I forgot to uh, mention our sponsor. Um, the Purdue Union Club Hotel. Thank you so much to them for their support. Um, much nicer accommodations, much better accommodations than I spent this weekend. So um, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. And thank you for processing our materials, however it is you process our materials. And I'll talk to you again sometime down the line. I'm going to have to work on that in occupational therapy here in the next couple of weeks. So thanks, everybody.